2013, there were more than 6 million households in the UK that suffer from fuel poverty. But these statistics mask what it really means. If you've ever had to go for a few days with the heating broken down, you'll know what it means to not be able to keep your home warm. Imagine having to live throughout a winter with that problem, not being able to get warm enough, and then having the worry of the bills that will come in the spring. So why are there so many people facing the misery of cold homes? There are three really important factors. The first is obvious, the cost of fuel, particularly the fuel you use for heating, be that electricity or gas or oil or coal. The second factor is the income that the household actually has. How much money has it got to spend on the necessities of food, clothing, and of course heating and our fuel bills. The third factor is really important, and that's the energy efficiency of the home. How well insulated it is, and how well the heating system turns the fuel we buy and put into it into warmth in the home. These different factors, the low income, the expensive fuel, the inefficient housing, often find they combine in inner city areas where you've got older housing, but also, and an issue that's often overlooked, they combine in rural areas where you've got old cottages, older buildings, they're often off the gas grid, so you haven't got access to gas, which is the cheapest, most controllable form of heating, and therefore the easiest for people to use to combat a cold home. We live in the countryside in the middle of nowhere, we're surrounded by fields. We live in a cottage that was built in the 1880s out of stone. We have single glazed windows. And whilst it is, to some eyes, idyllic, in the winter when you're freezing cold and you're scared to turn the heating up and living in the country, the temperatures are much lower than they are in the towns, normally two or three degrees. In the winter, it can be a lot more. Yes, it's beautiful in the summer, but in the winter, it's a nightmare. The human impacts of fuel poverty, of living in a cold home, are often masked because we end up focusing on the health and the social problems that it causes and forget the role that the cold home, the fuel poverty, has in making those issues worse. It does, you just get a down feeling all the time because you're just, you're just cold, you know, you have to put extra layers on. There's times I just sit here and I don't want to get up, I know I have to go in the kitchen, it's cold in there, I have to go upstairs to clean the bathroom, I know it's cold. When you're breathing, you can see steam coming out your mouth. You know, it's, it's not nice. You know, you're in the house and you don't feel comfortable. There are hardly any health problems that are not made worse by living in a cold home. Some of those are well understood. Cardiovascular diseases, respiratory problems like bronchitis, asthma, those are all become much worse by living in a cold home. But fuel poverty just makes people more ill, often chronically so. And it's not just physical illness, it's also the illness that can result from just the misery of living in a cold home, mental illness and depression. If you'd asked me a year or two ago whether I would ever need antidepressants, I would have said, no, I'm in control of my life and my mind. I'm not a person that would need that. The constant being cold, it just wears you down, cold and alone. And it just, it breaks you. Fuel poverty is not just bad for health and well-being. It also creates a huge additional burden on the NHS in terms of cost. Conservative estimates put that at somewhere in the region of £1.3 billion, but it could be much higher when you take into account all the extra visits to GPs, the emergency admissions, the chronic illnesses that end up sitting in hospital wards. When my home is too cold, it affects me in lots of different ways, and I have ended up in hospital be before. But now, there's no, there's no worry. I know that when the winter comes, my home is going to be warm enough to keep me well.